the, the Muslim view of the Bible, because uh, he was using uh, the Bible, because he formerly was an atheist and became a Christian. I'm trying to explain to him that we don't view the Bible the way that he views the Bible, right? As in, what is our perspective on the Bible? Because I don't want him to stop at the first religion being Christianity, because if you came from atheism, you should look into Islam, you should look into other things. So he's talking about the Logos and some other things which I'm not too familiar with. So, I mean, obviously, you know, we believe that the Christians or the Jews, they, they are referred to as um, the people of the book in the Quran. Yeah. What that means is like, we believe that they, when I say they, I mean, obviously, during the time of Moses, and during the time of Jesus, they were given revelation directly from the same God. The same God as we believe. Yeah, it's given the same revelation. Sorry, different revelation to different prophets during different times. Yeah. And that's the reason they're referred to as the people of the book in the yeah. Quran. I, I think there's actually a really interesting tiny segue very quickly, but okay. the patriarchs of the Bible, the Hebrew patriarchs, actually being related to a, a late dynastic Egyptian line, I think is really, really credible now. And um, you can have a look at the names of the patriarchs in the, the Old Testament and actually match them against Egyptian Hyksos, since they're shepherd kings, uh, kings' lines, and you find the same names. So they, these guys were actually existing. When you say patriarchs, you mean the from, uh, Yeah, prophets, sorry, the same thing, yeah, prophets actually. Um, but going back to theology, very don't, interesting, yeah. by the way, because it shows you how Egypt had such a massive impact on the, the, the Hebrews. Yeah. Yeah. It could be possible because you know the Quran says that Allah sends messengers to every nation, yeah. Yeah, sure. and every nation includes Egypt, includes India, includes yeah. other parts you know, of the, the world. The Jews were supposed to be in, in Egypt for quite a while. Um, there, there are some, you know, the ten plagues in Egyptian stela. You see this. There are psalms. Uh, Old Testament Psalms that come from Egyptian texts. Like, they literally like, they, they laid out the Ten yeah, so Commandments. I think there's coming from sometimes there is like um, a common, uh, let's say, doctrines. Yeah, they root, 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 they root, root. Root. Like, look, the important thing here is to understand how people saw God. You know, like for the Egyptians, they, they had a a really strong focus on life of the best. So in, in that terms, what is your belief as a Christian? I believe? I think we, I no, I, Gnostic. Some, Gnostic Christian. In, oh, I see, okay. In a real, we are say a reincarnation, essentially, in that we, we are here and we are endless, we are timeless, that spirit that comes into every single one and animal from the one here. Is, is actually in effect timeless. And why do you why do you believe in a reincarnation? Why why not why don't you believe that life is just one rather than I multiple that, chances? That, yeah, the spirit that we that inhabits our soul is is cyclical, and I think it comes. No, but what that's in, in that's a presupposition, isn't it? On yeah, what yeah. basis do you think it's cyclical? Like, well, revelation. I, I'd say I, I think personal revelation from a some kind of divine source. And I know that, that's not testable at all, I'm just saying what... So what Mr. Revelation says it's cyclical. Oh, so everything's cyclical. The idea of God is G-O-D, generation, operation, decline, Yeah, but that's, a, that's a Hindu is, everything philosophy. Everything Our you... lives are, you know, we go up, we go down. The idea of, of us starting again and coming back and heaven and hell, just very quickly, this Gnostic idea of heaven and hell being here and us being able to achieve heaven in the moment and and tomorrow sure and hell as well here being existing right so, here i think is very powerful so for, for us the, for us we have a clear distinction between god and the creation do you believe in a duality or do you believe in a, a non-duality but also that logos in creation this idea that the word being spoken and the word creating everything around no us. but that just you know the word being spoken it could be we believe that Allah created Adam and he said be and it became from dust yeah. oh, sure. so the the logos which you're talking about practically just means for us it is a command of God yeah. so when God wants something I'm to that, that come into existence words. he can just yeah. command it to come into existence yeah. he says kun which is the which is the logos the word or the command of Allah which brings things into existence like be and it is yeah, sure. But that word itself, if you think of physics, pure physics, yeah. the idea of a vibration and energy being everything we are, everything that exists, is the 
a dynamic between um, electron and uh, what is it? Electron and neutral. You know, and the idea of a, a, a vibrational frequency being a very blank length, the blank distance within the smallest things we've been able to find so far. Yeah, but what's that? And where's the link between that and? The for example, the, the sound, the vibration, because yeah. everything is sound. Do you believe there is there is existence be beyond the material world? Yeah. Do you believe in a metaphysical world? Okay. So how would you relate the meta? For example, you talk about vibrations, energy, uh, matter. For example, all these things are something which originated with the universe. Yeah. So sure. what was? Do you believe that was God before the universe was created? Yeah. Yeah? yeah sure. well, what was he? And like what can you can you define from your understanding what God is? Brains are human that human brains can't exactly oh. you know what I mean? It's hard to This is where I would like to remind people. you about the revelation. Go on. Yeah? Because earlier you mentioned the revelation. Yes. How do you know? That's how we also know because there's no way we can see beyond what beyond the existence we have today, isn't it? So we I, can't I, see beyond I, that. So we have to depend on were. No no we depend on the revelation. The yeah. testimony of the prophets. Yeah. So the prophets were given revelation by God. Do you believe God can communicate with us? Yes. Yes? So God is able, because He's a creator of everything, including all the existence that you know of. Yes? So He is ever existing. He's not created. He's sending His Spirit and it's coming into the hearts of the epistle writers. No, no, He sends prophets and messengers. So, so human beings like us, yes? Obviously righteous human beings. So how do they get to, how do they, I'm assuming they're kind of picked or they, they reach a certain level of... Uh, Just like you agreed with me that God is able to communicate with his creation. So he can communicate either through through angels or some other means. Yeah, yeah. If he no, wants, no, he I can... Agree. Yeah, so, so this is how God communicates. We don't believe that God is someone who is distant and is like this absent father who once created just leaves the universe to fend for itself, we believe that he's, he's constantly guiding us right. in different ways. Yeah, yeah. And one of the ways he guides us is through his revelation. And the revelation comes through prophets and messengers. And these prophets and messengers are not just only Tom, Dick and Harry, God himself appoints them. That's right. I mean, this is the initiatory systems that come through a lot of Gnostic ideas and Gnostic thought. Yeah. The idea that you By the Gnosticism is not mainstream Christianity. Right. Yeah. The, the idea of milk and meat in the New Testament and to the prophet, uh, yeah. the, the epistle writers and these people who had those revelations that were taken up into the heavens and planted back down again. Ezekiel took to this Enoch and so on. These revelations of or the nature of things yeah. like I've had I've had some extremely powerful and potent uh, uh, experiences of, of going up a kind of world tree if you like and then going down it again so and you had an experience of holding this life these decisions together between absolute good and absolute creation and order and then destruction and chaos at the bottom and I felt I truly felt hand on heart the experience of being taken down onto into some kind of primitive rocky matter and then up into veg, vegetative matter up again into well, what does that uh, mean what does that mean the two well, extreme the two extremities in a moment. Say again? You're getting the idea of the whole of creation in us you know yeah but what does that even mean whole of creation in a moment what does it mean showing you how this is how we this is how i did it here you go yeah and this is this is the essence of evolution in a, in a human mind in a, in a second. You people can go and learn how to navigate these worlds, if you like, and have these initiatory experiences. You know, peop pe you know people like people who might have taken certain drugs could have that experience. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, but, but that doesn't like, but that know, doesn't mean anything, does it? It is just their imagination. You just said that the prophets are given certain something, a certain something. Revelations. Not drugs. There's yeah, a big no, difference. No, no, for sure. <laughs> yes. For sure. So certain people can have this high experience. I don't know. Even yeah. uh, otherworldly experiences yeah. through through drug in, uh, you being know, induced. They, they come to any number of different people. You could be Chinese. You could be a Taoist monk. You can be Buddhist. Doesn't matter who you are. You can be Jewish. You can be Christian. You can be uh, Muslim. Yeah. You know. You uh, when you're ready. That God, the Master, will appear. <laughs> no, but what, what I'm what I'm saying is, look for every day people you know for the lay people for them what they what they require is some form of guidance yeah, sure. 
for them to lead a life. For, for example, if you if you were to distinguish between the good and bad today, everyone will have their own understanding of good and bad. Do you agree? Yeah, it's subjective. So how would you come to a conclusion as to what is really objectively good and what is really bad or evil? How would you come to that understanding? If everyone is thinking subjectively, which is not helping us, is it? Pristine way and clearer and more clarity through having a series of revelations that showed me the order of things and that order was behind. But how do you know that revelation is from how do you know that revelation is from God though? Uh, well, it was from this is the thing, right? It showed me everything. Yeah, but the devil it can do that if he wants yes, to. It showed me the could, the, could the devil it showed me could the devil do that if he wanted to? It may be. Here's the thing. Do you remember in the Bible the devil shows the good, shows Jesus the, the bad. Remember the devil takes him to a mountain? Of something absolutely intrinsic within the human condition and that is that we are we are both of those things. You remember the forty days forty days in wilderness where Jesus spent with the Satan and the Satan showed him many things? So the devil can show the same thing to even Jesus. What did Jesus say at the end, you know? He said, get out, go, get from the Satan. Yeah, but that's the thing. Jesus could identify the Satan. Can you though? I think that, well, <laughs> look, this is, this is nature and this is our understanding now of good and bad. Is spe specific. It's subjective. I'm telling you, good and bad for everyone is subjective. No, unless and until, unless an and until God instructs exactly. you specifically. There is an objective and a meaningful and a testable and a, uh, a, a way to understand good and bad that have absolute connotations for the human spirit, psyche, yeah. body. How would you identify families, that? That's the question, my friend. How would you identify well, good or bad? You have to look at how people uh, resonate and conjugate with each other. And I mean conjugation in more than just a sexual sense, right? The idea of having a shared experience, the idea of having shared a shared kind of relations that help us build societies. You know, there are there are many there are many cults who have a shared experience, a sh shared understanding. But those cults, later on, people realize were actually indulging in evil. When their leader told them it was actually maybe, something maybe good, thing, like you know, like the guy in was it uh, in Waco, John, Texas? John, Jonestown. Yes. Yeah, yeah, sure. So these no, these people, they literally believe that this is message they're receiving but from what, God. What they but it turned out. A while, you know, what, what do they What do they start to do after a while? You exactly. So no, no. But the thing is, how it how it started was good according to them, yeah, and it true. it ended up becoming evil. Yeah. And that's why I'm telling you, how will you idea? Because many people have the shared experiences which they are in fact, I don't know, in a way they, they become oriented once you're in that cult, that you're doing something good for the whole of humanity. And you guys are chosen ones, you guys are the special ones who God has chosen. And this cult, they believed everything that the leader told them until they realized it was just evil.